Hi, I'm Robin and today I'll be going over something that I literally gave zero thought to the entire time I was a student, which is what it feels like to give an exam as a professor. Because as a student, exams are pretty much all bad. You've got this big scary, what will my grade in this class be? Question just lingering over you all the time. Plus you've got the annoyingness of studying combined with the terror and dread of getting back your score. And at least for me, the stress of dealing with these exams was so intense that the only time I really thought about the professor at all was when I was like, okay, are they nice or mean? And then based on that, is the exam going to be fair, not fair, easy or hard? And that's pretty much fine and how it should be. If you're a student, your job is to focus on yourself. So this video is really just for entertainment purposes in case you were curious about what the professor is going with, not like advice to be like, adjust your behavior. So when I started teaching, I realized that while giving the exams is nowhere as scary as taking them, it's definitely very unfun. It is not neutral. It is not just another day of going to work. And as I eventually learned, giving exams is this bizarre emotional roller coaster that plays out semester over semester. So before the exam, everything's going along nice and normal, just regular class. And then the first thing on my end would be, I'd be like, okay, the exam's coming up, so I need to start warning people, you know, it's time to start studying. And so you start kind of mentioning that every lecture, maybe like two weeks before the exam, like, okay, and you mention the specific date, you try to do anything you can do, just be like, the exam's coming guys, the exam's coming guys. And then the very first thing you feel is frustration at realizing that your warnings are doing nothing. Like it's almost like they're not hurt. It's like, whoop, I don't wanna think about that, so that's gone. And asterisk, yes, some people are always prepared. You're always gonna have a section of students at the top of the class that are just off doing their own thing. Nothing you do is going to change the fact that these people were always going to bust their ass and get an A. But in every class I've taught, there's a big mass of people in the middle. And these are the people that just are not heeding your warnings when you start warning about the test. So that's step one. Step two is that you have the few days right before the test. You know, usually under a week, like maybe one or two lectures before the exam. And this is the first time that the atmosphere in the classroom significantly changes. It's not normal class as usual. It's everyone's on edge, but also, everyone's on best behavior because now they finally have realized the exam really is coming soon. And so even though it's a tense energy, this can feel really nice as a teacher because everyone is listening really closely. They're asking probing questions. They're coming up to you after class. You can clarify topics and look at their work. And it's great. You're like, oh, if they could just be like this all the time, everyone get, get an A. This is, this is amazing. Like go students. Uh, but this whole, we care about the class thing. It's not really on solid ground. It's based on fear, anxiety, and unfortunately for many delusion, because in the few days before the test, some people are off studying fine. You know, a bulk of people are always going to get it together, but there's usually a big group of people that have been slacking all semester and try to cram in everything in a day. And they're very easy to identify because they're asking questions that everyone else was asking in the first week of class. And you want to be like, you're too late. You've already failed. Go ahead and sleep all night. Don't open the textbook one more time because no matter how much cramming you try to do in the remaining 22 hours that you have is not going to work. You have failed. Did you think you could learn two months of chemistry in one day? But of course you can't say that and it's not even helpful to think because it's mean and not related to your job that much and you except you can't help thinking about those students because you know they're going to blame you it's like this blame is going to come right back to me but you just kind of denial yourself you're like don't think about them whatever and so next is the test day and it's very quiet <sighs> It's a wonderful day for you, the teacher, because you don't have to do anything. You just sit there in silence, your feet feel really good, your voice isn't sore from talking all day, and the minor stresses of watching to see if people cheat, it's not that stressful, it's just like scan around, you know? Uh, the only exception to test day being a wonderful, relaxing day is when people break because sometimes after a test, someone will linger in the room until everyone else leaves 
And as soon as you look up, you see like, oh, there's one person left. And you notice, oh, they're either crying already or they're about to cry. And then they kind of walk up to you and then it's just a flood of they are pouring their heart out to you and all of their hopes and dreams and what happened with them on this exam and why they really needed to pass this class to obtain said hopes and dreams. And it's very sad. Uh, it's really, really um, just emotionally draining. It's, it's just, it's just sad to, you know, be with anyone as they're kind of melting down like that. And it's also sad because there's nothing you can do, you know, in a science class, there's no way to boost someone's grades because they're emotionally upset. Um, but I at least always tried to really honor how they were feeling and be as comforting as I could be in the moment, you know, because the reality is that almost no one's life is going to be ruined because of a chemistry test. And even though watching someone sob and pick apart their entire human worth over an exam is very uncomfortable, it always really shook me into being Zen because as a teacher, you've already gone through this test and degree system, you know, like you're finally out of it, you were stuck in it for years. And you have kind of this understanding that there are really only two options that students have. You can stick with the path or you can leave the path. And if you stick with the path, that means that you're going to learn what it takes to pass these classes. And that might be the first time you take them or the fourth, you know, but whatever, you're going to learn. And if you pick to leave the path, then most likely you're going to pick something that suits you better. And so there's really nothing better or worse about either of these paths. Don't listen to teachers and parents that tell you otherwise, but students don't want to hear that fact when they've just learned that they've flunked an exam, you know? So I'd either withhold that information that it doesn't really matter what happens, you're going to be okay overall, or I try to kind of weave it in subtly and just kind of lightly dust on top, like, don't worry no matter what happens, you know? And so, yeah, even though these situations were always very uncomfortable, they really served as some of the most clear, ex clear examples I've ever experienced, like honestly in my whole life, about just how not worth it it is to exert energy on hating yourself, you know? I would also personally say that if you're a teacher and you're anything but gracious and kind as you can be in these moments, that you're a huge jerk and a bad teacher. This is a responsibility for you to be nice when students come to you emotionally upset after exams, I feel. Uh, but but yeah, it, it really, it really surprised me how much I was changed by having these you know, students over years and years, you know, it's just a few each semester, but they come and they're so upset because it, it, it would just help me think like, okay, I remember how scary it was to fail these chemistry exams. It feels like your life is on the line. And you know, for me, just watching someone a few years past in my life where this student was and being like, I can already see that you're going to be fine no matter what happens. And I, I can really see that in a way that you can't because you're so upset about this exam that it really gave me the power to reflect on my own personal life and be like, no matter if you're ever spending time hating yourself and being like this decision you did, this is so bad, this is so ruined, everything sucks, you're not gonna make it up. I'd be like, don't, don't do that. It's, it's not worth it, you know? Like I would think back to those times where I'm like, this person felt that their life was ruined because of this exam that I gave them and I know that they're fine. And that gave me the power to kind of overcome problems I was having where I didn't have, you know, the outside perspective. Um, so thank you students and I'm sorry that it took you getting an F for me to learn a life lesson. <laughs> so then comes the grading and this is the part of the week where you're really annoyed. All that sweet, sweet, they're taking the exam time is over because now you have teacher homework which is grading the exams and you get very resentful. You're like, I have to do extra work. I don't want to do extra work. I want to watch TV and do nothing. <laughs> um, and you kind of think back to like the extra time you gained in class where you didn't have to do anything, but that's not really worth it. You're like, I still don't want to do extra. Um, but then comes the worst day. The day you hand back the grades. <sighs> oh, this is a day that sucks. It sucks. <laughs> this is the day where the students take the bad feelings that your test gave them and do their best to shove those feelings into you. <laughs> On days where I would have three classes I had to hand back grades to, I would legit be in a bad mood all day because handing back grades is like getting dozens of emotional dagger wounds. 
you know, broadly, students are either happy or unhappy with the grade they got. And seeing the smiles, the high fives, the excited squeals, and the sighs of relief are all amazing, you know, especially when it's a student, a student who you saw busting their ass to study. But it's a little bit like positive comments versus negative comments on social media, where no matter how many positive ones you get, even if that's the huge majority, just several really negative ones can like, that. that's what you remember, that's what wrecks you, you know? Um, and then also, it's something funny I realized is that even though I was one of these students, there's something anticlimactic about handing back a test to the top students in your class. It's like, yes, yes, here's another 97. I'll see you again in six weeks when I will hand you your next 97. This class could be topped by a llama and you would still get a 97 because you'd just learn it all by yourself. Plus you'd probably learn how to knit llama fur somehow, whatever, here's your A, you know? But then there are the students who failed. And if you're teaching chemistry, there will always be students who failed, who you need to fail for to not fail them on the test would be to fail them in life because all you would do is to propel them into more and harder chemistry, which would not be responsible of you. And within the students that have failed, there are two groups, the students that blame themselves and they're often very sad and very nice people. But then there are the students that failed and blame you. And that's where the emotional daggers come in. <laughs> Just like the feeling that you get when a student has failed and you are this random person handing them a piece of paper that essentially tells them they're not good enough at chemistry or deciding what they should be studying because they're picked chemistry. And that's, it's brutal. It's brutal to do that. And it's really easy to take that personally and create a vendetta around the teacher and their human flaws because God knows that students have plenty of time to get to know all of our human flaws, which are valid. And that's just, it just sucks. <laughs> And once again, the teacher is the adult in this situation. It's totally fine that students do this. It's just part of the job, but part of the job can involve getting your feeling can involve getting your feelings hurt. Uh, and mine certainly did. You know, the stares are overwhelming. See, people, seeing people's eyes go black and stare into you with hatred is overwhelming and intense. And uh, this was definitely the most unexpected part about teaching for me. You know, when you're a TA, it's kind of like pass the buck. There's one more authority figure behind you that like they don't they don't take their anger out on you. Um, but it really surprised me. Like when I got into the flow of this, I would always consistently get sad on these few days. Uh, but then after a couple of days, everyone kind of gets collective amnesia. The class goes back to normal, and you rinse and repeat until the end of the semester, and you never see them again. And thus is the weird life cycle of teaching. <laughs> I'm trying to do more videos like this where I kind of talk about just random observations I had as a teacher or a student. So if you have any ideas for them or any things you'd want to know, what are teachers and professors thinking during these moments, uh, please drop them in the comments. And otherwise, uh, good luck in your courses.